Bella. Hey. Easy. Good girl. Good girl, Bella. Bella, Bella, Bella. Conan. What's up, buddy? Got the cone on because I'm trying to get this hot spot on his leg to heal. So, Kona should be coming off here next day or two. We got Carly. We got Sambuca. We got Weddle. Kalua. Mavis! Good girl. And then over there, Augie. What are you doing? Hiding behind the column, ready to go back inside. Then we got Ricky. Then we got Zoe. Zoe! We got Spike! Spike! <laughs> so, here's all the knuckleheads. Ricky, the biggest knucklehead. Arr. Hey, Spike. Good boy, buddy. You got Weddo. Zoe. You got Bella. Uh, Carly's over there sniffing. Mavis! <laughs> Mavis, good girl. So, Spike's kind of a big boy. When he got here, he was a lot bigger. So. You got Zoe, so you see the size difference. <laughs> That's his spot right there, obviously. Who else? Carly! Hey! Here. Carly. Good girl. Got Carly, she's a cool dog. Oh, they all love the butt scratches. I love the butt scratches. Augie! Go. Carly, go. Augie, come here. Good girl. There's Zoe. Augie! Good boy. Hey, buddy. Oh, he always has these intense, crazy eyes. He always looks like he's trying to stare somebody down, but to prove he's not, he's always ready for the toy. He's just playing around. Hey, drop. Go. Go. Sit. So Mavis and and Augie are the playful ones. Augie's a little bit more dominant. Hey! So there was a growl there, so that was a correction on Augie correcting Mavis. So to stop that, I just said the hey. If it would have persisted, I would take the toy. But since he gave it up, I'm fine with that. Again, Mavis just wants to play. There goes uh, Zoe and Mavis playing. Kalua is about to play. We got a uh, wet over here. Uh, Weddle's kind of in the process of going blind, so he can see some stuff, and at night he really can't see too much. So here's the knuckleheads going at it. We got Spike. We got Bella, Bella, Bella. Hey, sit. Easy. Easy. Good girl. Good girl. Then we got Weddle. And then we got Augie. Then we got Ricky. We got Carly. Spike! Kalua. And these two, they'll play all day long. <laughs> so just a bunch of dogs. They're all up for adoption through www.choosedlife.org. Um, DM me if you have any uh, questions about any behaviors or issues or histories. Again, before I get them, I really don't know the histories, but I can kind of tell you what I've had to do to kind of get them integrated so that way they're happy with one another. We just got Bella. Hey, no. Um, got her like, I don't know, maybe a month ago. And, uh, 
She's getting a little excitement. You see how the tail's wagging with a little bit of intensity. Bella! Bella! Go. Go. Bella! Bella! Come here. Hey. Good girl. Go. Bella! Come here. Bella! So I was watching that right there. I don't know if you saw, but when Mavis came by Bella, Bella kind of turned around with her mouth open, almost like a little um, bite correction. So I'm watching that. Because I do want them to play around her. So if you, as, you know, as you see, Mavis went right back to her, so she didn't take that as anything you know mean or bad or harmful. So now we got Kalua playing. And then we'll have Carly playing. So, when you have a bunch of dogs like this, not only do you want to watch the play, you want to watch the surrounding dogs that aren't playing to make sure that they're not going to go into a, a corrective or dominant state. Or nervous, you know. Mavis and Kalua, my personal dog, they sleep together. So... There's zero uh, attention I'm giving them as far as wondering if the play is okay. I know that play is fine. Spike! But see when Spike's out looking at the, the, the doorway or, or the, you know, if they go over in the corner or something like that. I want to be aware of that stuff because if this play happens and then Spike goes over there to stand by the door. Hey! Like Bella right there. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that they're not so uncomfortable that they're searching for a way out. You see what I mean? So that's my job. If, if, um, if the play is too excited and the dogs get nervous and start kind of feeling like they're unsafe. So right here, got Spike kind of playing a little bit. And Spike never plays. That's why you always see me calling him out of the, the corner and stuff. It's because I'm not trying to get him to play, but I, I don't want him to try to find a corner, find an exit whenever excitement happens. And then what happens is he feels more secure, more safe, because I'm controlling that space, and then that's when they'll kind of like be more likely to play. Bella! Good girl. Good girl, Bella. Good girl. So Bella had uh, some, some food reactivity, some personal space reactivity from, hey! Um, and then also it's a lot of excitement. So whenever you pat her, she would just go absolutely crazy. So you see there's a little mouth to mouth right there uh, between Carly and Bella. So that's good. So now her tail's wagging, but it's not wagging like it was before. Look at, very sweet, very chilled out. So one thing I, I, I just noticed is Augie just started to lean into me. So now I could feel him where he wasn't doing that before. And if you notice his body position, his back is to me. So when this play is going on, hey, go. I'm going to send him away because I don't want protection from him. Hey, go. So it's, it's that easy and that's, that's all I'm looking for. But if I don't do that, then whenever they play, he'll start coming over here every time. And then he'll start to kind of go into a protective territorial mode over me. And then if I don't do anything about that, then he could do it over a person or over a toy or over anything else. And when he first got here, when he was playing with toys, he would give a dog a growl whenever that dog got too close to his toy. So for a while, I would let other dogs play with toys, but not him. And then now, like we saw earlier with, with Mavis grabbing onto the toy there, they were fine, you know, just kind of playing around. If you notice, if you rewind the, t uh, the tape, that's how old I am. If you rewind the video... Um, when Mavis was playing with Augie when he had the toy in, earlier in the video, Mavis was playing. Augie was kind of, this is my toy, back off. It was a different vibe, and if you rewatch it, you'll be able to tell it. And so I was allowing that because I want him to be... Uh, that, that's good right there. Hey! So, you got a little face-to-face -face here. And with the cone, it's crazy, too, because that's like an added... Uh, <laughs> like a weird situation, you know. So Bella doing nose to nose with Colden, who's also uh, had had a history of being reactive. I I, I believe uh, out of nervousness. Um, so now 
uh, he's comfortable enough to smell Bella, and Bella's okay enough to do that with that cone right there. So that's cool. But getting back to the... So, ah, look, look at the position here. Now he's not touching me, but look at the position. Go. So I'm going to back him away. Get out of here. So what happens is once he just kind of sits next to me, I'm okay with that. But if you notice that body position is right in front of me, it's touching me, his back is to me. So there's a lot of communication, even though he just kind of comes over to sit down. So we need to kind of be aware of, hey, of all the different um, body language, like communications and messages, all that kind of stuff. So they don't have to growl. They don't have to bark. They don't have to yelp or whine. They, they're, they're communicating all the time just by their presence, their eye contact, you know, how their body is. Is it stiff? Is it loose? Is it, is it jiggling back and forth and having a good time? So, so see, I, I don't typically tell dogs to lay down, but when they do lay down, I know that they're starting to calm down. So I know that colon is a perfect one. So now he's going to go a submissive state. So now, here, look at who's not here. Dominant. Go. 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 So I'm going to back him off. So that way, Coleman here. So, ah, oh, look at this. So I'm allowing this because that approach is different. See, as soon as Colden went down, Augie came in. So that was same thing with Zoe right here. So when a dog goes down, especially when you have multiple dogs, uh, we definitely want to be aware of when a dog shows submission, does another dog take advantage? And if that happens, then I need to back that dog off. You know, so now look at the space is good. The space is good. Wagging tail, just chilling out. He got a little bit higher a second ago because there's, hey, there's a sound. He got Carly over there. What do you call it? Uh, counters, oh, excuse me, counter surfing. So you can stop a lot of misbehaviors just by hanging out with them. If you stop it, it it's very small uh, misbehaviors. You can really avoid a lot of big stuff. Hey. So. Hey, buddy. But yeah, it's a, it's a, so right here. See, so leaning in. So I'm gonna back. Go. Go. So I was petting her, and she was standing off to the side. And then when I started petting her, she leans into me. So you know that saying. You know, you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. Well, that that's kind of what's going on. So here's Zoe. I'm gonna start. So just me giving her attention is bringing her in. Hey, so I could touch and back her off. Now she's not coming in anymore. That now that was coming in, just just that little step right there. Hey, so now she's not coming in. So I'll pet her. Now if I stop petting her and she comes in again, look at that. Go. But see if I allow that, then they go. Then they're gonna start jumping. So now she walked away. Doesn't care about me. Sorry. I'll let her go. Away. Hey. Okay, so now, let's see he's touching. Go. Zoe. Come here. So I called Zoe, so anybody else that comes in is going to get shooed away. Go. Go. So I called Zoe, so what happens is, when I called Zoe, I was like, Zoe, my voice went high pitch, right? So that's a different uh, message than a, hey. So when I go high pitch, Zoe, come here, good girl. Other dogs will sense that and come in because what they're trying to do is they're actually trying to kind of take over the softness, right? So if I call Zoe and Zoe comes over and she's not touching me, then I'll, of course I'll pet her. Good girl. Zoe, 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 Zoe. But I got to watch out because what happens is when I start treating her one way, other dogs think I'll treat them one way. So now she's starting to move into me. Go. So now I'm going to ask for space. So now we're starting over. She backed up, gave me space, now I'll pet her again. Now if I stop petting her, see now she's staying. So what happens is I'm, even though I'm just sitting here petting her, the way I'm petting her, the timing of how I pet her, uh, hey, the behavior that she's exhibiting that allows me to pet her, which is calm, hey, see she stays there. She's actually training right now, she's actually working right now because uh, if before she was kind of being more dominant. So anyway, just a few tips. Please uh, subscribe, check it out, like. Thank you very much.